Hello guys, this is MoGraphLove.com tutorial and today we're going to be looking at creating a wooden texture, wooden material, applying it on a uh, text object and we're going to be talking about some uh, interesting techniques like using uh, selection tags with text and using a layer browser uh, in uh, material and uh, using uh, normal maps to create more uh, more realistic and, uh, and and sexier visual so here, here you can see what we're gonna be uh, creating let's just uh, jump right in and uh, create a new document I actually have a document created here and uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add in the text so I'm gonna use MoGraph Mo text okay and I'm gonna do a uh, simple thing here I'm gonna select that go under object and change that to something like wooden texture okay I'm going to um, let's just have a look how that looks that's cool I'm gonna use a different font I'm gonna use a font uh, called chunk 5 you can obviously use whatever font and whatever text you want I'm gonna use a different uh, no different vertical spacing so that it's centered nicely and I'm going to just align it to middle of the screen like so I'm also going to increase the depth and I will go under caps here and I'm going to do fillet cap on both sides this this fillet this kind of a bevel will will then pick up some uh, light and uh, create like an interesting much much sexier visual so let's go here and the steps and increase the steps to five and decrease the radius to two. Let's do the same here, five step two. And now you can see that already, uh, even here in cinema, you can see that the, the nice kind of bevel and emboss kind of, kind of feel. Uh, and what I've done prior to this is because this is not a lighting or um, this is not a lighting tutorial I put I created like a little scene with this uh, yellow background it's just a yellow color on, on a sky and I also created uh, these two these two area lights that are uh, adding some light and they're, they're both have uh, shadows on there's one looking from this direction that this is set to 120 percent and it's got uh, some soft, soft shadow uh, shadows and the same here on the other one that's looking from the back and that's set to 46 percent so if we if we now look from some nice angle like this and uh, render it you can see that we have we have some kind of shadows you can see them here and here and you can see the nice shadow in here uh, in the in the inner parts of of our letters and I think that's uh, that's that's good it's very very simple uh, lighting setup so I'm just gonna hide that in the render and we are going to focus on creating the texture now to create that texture the same kind of look uh, that uh, I had here we are actually going to use uh, you can see we, we are going to use a real photo of wood now uh, to do that you will have to do some digging around the internet I've, I've already found a photo here on uh, on Deviant Art. This is uh, by a guy called Beyond Oddities. Uh, I will definitely uh, link to to this page. You download the image, and before we actually use it in cinema, what we need to do is that we need to even the image out. You can when we when we look at it, we can see that we have these areas here in the corner here in the corners uh, that are very very dark uh, you can see that this whole left side is quite dark and uh, the right side in contrast is very bright and that is not very good for if you want to tile the texture put it uh, next to each other it's just gonna create these areas uh, these light and dark areas it's, it might look a bit it might look you know not not as uh, not as good as it could so what we will do is that we're gonna go to Photoshop and in Photoshop, we're going to go and uh, load the, the, the image in. I already have it saved here. So I'm, I'm just going to go and open the image in, in Photoshop. And here in Photoshop, we have this adjustment under image adjustment, which is called shadows and highlights. Shadows and highlights, what it does is that it 
takes the either the shadow or the highlight areas of the image and tries to uh, match them you know even them out so if I if I now slide slide this over to 100% you can see especially in areas like this that the image now looks much more flat rather than this uh, the 0% is the original image this is the this is the uh, adjusted image and this will work much much better for uh, for our cost so we will we will go and we will save this image out I've, I've already saved it so I'm just gonna go here to cinema and I will create new material I'm gonna call it wood front because this this is uh, this is a wooden material that's actually gonna be sitting in, in on the front face and I'm gonna double click that and I'm gonna go into color and load uh, this this number two uh, this number two image here which is my uh, adjusted image and uh, I'm not gonna create a copy I mean, um, now I loaded the uh, I loaded the texture before I'm, 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 I'm before I'm gonna apply it I'm just gonna go here to specular I'm just gonna bring that specular down a bit like so because uh, the wood um, thing that's that's more fitting for that and now when we when we drag it into our motex we can see that it's not really what we what we want this front face really isn't getting the texture and that's because of our mapping or our projection mapping setup it's, it's currently set to UVW mapping you, you could uh, play around with that and set it but it's it's uh, it's much easier if you just go here and select cubic and uh, if you want to look at how your projection is actually applied on the object we can just switch here to this texture axis mode and if we select our mode, mode text we can see uh, this this gizmo here which represents how the, the uh, you can see that when I move with it uh, the texture moves with it as well so by doing this you can you can adjust and position your texture I'm gonna go here select the material and I'm just gonna um, check this uh, seamless here we can see if I go and uh, look for example here if I render if I render this out now we'll see a clear seam here you can see here the bright and the, and the dark area if I click seamless in the editor I can't actually see any difference but now when I render you can see that here the other part the the, the, the right side has been uh, reflected and uh, that creates a seamless seamless effect and uh, okay so this this is looking this is looking good for now we are just gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave this as it is and uh, next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna cr generate a normal map now normal map is a uh, representation it's a 2d representation of a 3d space and it's used to um, deform the object for the for the reflecting light or for the bouncing light so that it creates much more realistic and uh, nice result now to create a uh, normal map I'm gonna use this uh, software called called crazy bum it's a, it's a freeware for Macintosh there, there will definitely be something similar for PC as well and I'm just gonna go here and open a photograph from a file here I'm just gonna open our edited our adjusted image and I'm, and I'm gonna load it and uh, when it when it loads it's gonna it's gonna look at how the uh, it's gonna look at the image analyze the image and it's and it will offer us these two options how we think that uh, the, the, the the surface is uh, structure I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with uh, I'm just gonna go with this one and here straight away we get a we get a preview of how uh, it will look when it's applied you can now see that you can see you can see it here how the reflection of the of the light is actually the, sp the specular highlight on on the object is actually distorted and it's looking much more real than the, the flat gradient that you uh, th that you normally get now looking at this you can adjust the settings but we can just keep those as they are and we're gonna go and serve no save normals to a file and we will save this uh, we'll save this in, in, in a separate file you can also uh, save a displacement map occlusion map specularity and diffuse which is uh, the, the the regular texture and then um, when we go back to cinema if we open our material and go under normal here and check that we load the texture in I'm just gonna load our a uh, load our normal map here 
uh, no and we will see the result straight away if I now render it's um, you know let me just show you let me just show you quickly if I turn the normal off and I show the color off and I render it now you can see how the highlights are only being picked up by these uh, these these uh, filleted caps okay and there, there's a little bit of there's a little bit here as well but if I now select the normal put it back in and render you can see how the light is suddenly being picked up by all these uh, all, all these bumps and, and all these irregularities on our object which is due to the normal map and that creates much uh, much nicer much nicer image so I'm just gonna uh, put this back on and that is uh, that is looking that is looking great but there's one problem and that is that the the front face and the actual extrude is, is the same it's using the same texture and it's making the text um, very hard to read so what we can do is that we can use the selection tags that come with uh, mode text to actually uh, assign different texture to our front face and different texture to our extrude and we can also assign a separate texture for the for the cap so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna we're going to I'm going to go because I like all the settings that we did here on uh, on this material I'm just gonna hold command and drag it like so and I'm gonna actually duplicate that material and the second material I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna duplicate this material and uh, I hold it uh, held command and, and and drag that I'm just gonna go this uh, call this wood extrude and now if I go here and just for the just for the test I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna clear this I'm just gonna leave it black and I'm gonna now um, drag this onto onto here if I then go here and in selection I am uh, actually going to keep this because this is the base this is the, this is uh, this is everything else apart from uh, I'm just gonna keep this and, and drag this material here now the way it's processing is that cinema is looking at the first material okay it's the black then it's looking at this one okay and it overrides the material here okay so um, now if I with this material selected if I go to selection and put this as a C1 it's because it, it's a uh, caps one you can see that this material now is being applied only to the front and this black material is being applied everywhere else because it doesn't have any selection tag now it's important the uh, order of them because if I now s uh, swap this because this is uh, overriding everything else it's going to override even the this uh, C1 selection tag so be sure that um, make sure that this, uh, this this base one the extrude is actually first and then the caps is, uh, is the second one Okay, so we created this uh, this material, but now if I'm if I'm just gonna turn the color channel back on, it's it's, it's the same, it's the same texture. So you know there the, there is a, there's no point at the moment. What we will do is that we will create a layer shader to apply some color adjustment to this, so that we it's it's uh, it's darker. Now we already have this texture here, and if we click on this button and go here to layer, it created a layer shader. Now there's no there's no difference at the moment there's no change but if we click this icon we can see here that this now transformed into something that looks like a layer browser in Photoshop and indeed we can add more layers more images more more shaders more effect on top of this and it will affect the image so what I want to do now is that I just want to put a solid brown color so I'm just gonna go here do shader color and that that's uh, at the moment it just adds a white color on top of everything I'm just gonna go here I'm gonna change this color to this uh, change the color to something uh, something brown so I'm just gonna go here and um, select something like this and that's looking nice now I, I can use this arrow to go back um, here to my uh, layer shader and I'm just gonna turn this down to something like this you know I, I might even go and make it a little bit darker okay I'm just gonna go back and you can see now that because I'm adding this color and I'm, I changed the opacity of it it made this part 
uh, darker. Now I can also go and do effect brightness saturation gamma. And I can change the uh, I can change the, the the gamma. Put it something like 0 0.7, and that's going to make it even. You see, that's going to make it even uh, even darker. And that's uh, that's all I need to do here. And we can see that if I render. It's looking, it's looking much better. Now, what I don't like is that the, uh, the this front image is, uh, the, is is too saturated. So I'm just going to go here to the front, and I'm going to do the same trick with the layer shader. Click here, go layer, um, click on the on the thumbnail to get here. And here I'm going to select effect hue saturation lightness, and I'm just going to go here, and I'm going to change this to minus seven. Let's see that we do desaturate it a little bit, and now you know that's looking uh, that's looking a, that's looking better, a bit more cartoony. One thing that we we lost in the process is that our caps are kind of not there. So we're gonna we're gonna do another material here. I'm just gonna come and drag it, uh, duplicate the material. I'm just I'm gonna rename it to um, wood caps or wood. Uh, I don't know what they're called bevel. And I'm gonna do here. I already have the layer shader, so I'm just gonna go here and hue saturation lightness. I'm gonna boost the lightness up, and I'm gonna can boost the saturation. And let's just let's just change the hue. And I'm, I'm gonna add also an effect, and we can do a brightness contrast gamma. And I'm just gonna add a bit more contrast and add a bit more uh, brightness to it, so that when we then go. I'm going to do the same trick here with duplicating this tag. So I'm going to hold Command and duplicate the tag. That's going to copy all the all the settings that we did for the projection. And I'm going to drag this new one onto that. But I'm going to change the selection C1 to R1, which is the rounding one. And that will now you can see that that texture is now only applied on our rounding. So if I render this, you know that's looking uh, that's looking much better. Okay, I think we, we, we overdid it a little bit with the rounding. I think it's too bright, so I'm just going to delete the hue saturation lightness. And uh, yeah, now, now that's looking that's looking better. We can maybe make it a little bit, little bit brighter, like so. Okay, I'm, uh, that's looking nice. I'm happy with that. And yeah, that's uh, that's that. I think is really nice uh, wooden material in a text that is now much more legible since we changed these uh, these colors on the on the extrude. And yeah, now one thing is that you see that here. This is uh, this is C one R one. That means number one, which is the front face, and the, the back face is actually staying the same. If you want to do that, you would have to uh, duplicate the text and have it. Uh, change this C1 to C2 and change this R1 to R2 and uh, that would that would do it now there was one last trick that I did in this image to uh, make it uh, look a bit nicer and that's this shadow here and you might wonder how is that shadow on the background when there's no background and now there is actually a background which is uh, my, sh my, my shadow catcher uh, which I'm not going to go into that much detail, but I'm just going to explain to you that I set the visibility down so the the, the um, using the visibility tag display tag sorry so that the uh, the the shadow isn't that prominent and I also change um, here this compositing tag if you right click go cinema for D tags there was, there's a display that I talk about and there's also the compositing tag which I applied and I check this compositing background here which makes it uh, go away kind of seamless with the background and, and only catches the uh, the shadow so uh, I hope this was helpful for you I, I hope you uh, learned something new and uh, I hope to see you with the next tutorial on uh, our website mograflove.com all right guys see you later